Spatial intelligence may also be referred to as visual intelligence. Generally, individuals possessing this intelligence are artistic in nature, but there are many other uses as well. So spatial or visual intelligence allows people to see things and modify things in their mind, almost like in a 3D ability. So they're available to solve spatial problems, designing, they do in crafts. They may be able to create representations of content in a physical state. They are draw related images, um, especially when it re requires notes like arrows or connections or reference points. They like to organize with color. Um, they may even use different highlighters and they're able to visualize a topic. Some very common characteristics is that they tend to be very aware of their surroundings, that they're able to place themselves within a 3D model. They're good at remembering in images, they have a great sense of direction, and they generally are going to learn best through drawings and visual aids. They're very good at solving problems, especially visual problems, and they tend to have enjoyed geometry in school. They're good at drawing, they can visualize pictures, and they have a great ability to notice those colors as well as shapes. They may enjoy photography, they're good with directions, and they have a very innate ability to remember places very vividly with great detail. They're good at an artistic composition, and they generally are going to like books that have many pictures within them. So some popular ways that we can use that spatial intelligence is within navigation. And navigation around those Carolina islands in the South Seas is accomplished, or was accomplished rather, by native sailors without instruments. They used the position of the stars as they viewed them from the various islands. They used weather patterns and watercolor as their principal signposts. The journeys were broken down into a series of segments, and the navigator learned the position of the stars within each of those segments. Segments. And during the actual trip, the navigator had to actually mentally picture a reference of the island as it passed under a particular star. So from the envisioning exercise, he was able to compute the number of segments that were completed and the portion of the trip that remained. Any correction in the heading that needed to be required was also an ability for him to be able to visualize. So the navigator could not see the islands as he was sailing along. Instead, he mapped locations within that 3D mental picture of his journey. Another use of that spatial intelligence is Dr. Louis Agassi. He's an American scientist and he valued detail. One day a new assistant reported for duty and Agassi set the man to work studying an unusual specimen of fish. Having given his instructions, he stepped out of the lab for what the assistant thought would be a few minutes. After half an hour of observation, the student felt that he really had discovered everything there was to know about that fish. But the scientist still did not return. Several more hours went by, during which the student was really bored. He was frustrated, and he was very angry, feeling that he had been abandoned. And so to pass the time, he counted scales and fins, and he began to diagram the fish. And he started to discover things that he had missed in that initial viewing, including the fact that the fish had no eyelids. So eventually, that master scientist returned, and to the relief of that you know, very novice researcher, the scientist, however, was not satisfied with what the young scientist had discovered and he kept his apprentice looking at the fish for two more days. Many years later that man who had risen to a prominent position in his field recalled those three days as the most valuable training he had ever received. This slideshow is actually part of a course called Be Super Smart, and it's available on Udemy.com. During this course, we're going to look at testing and how you can really discover what intelligences you use, your preferred intelligences, as well as your less preferred intelligences. And although Howard Gardner doesn't really support any testing, there are some ways that you can discover which intelligences come naturally to you. We also look at examples of historical figures and how they've used the multiple intelligences. We investigate the dimensions of each of these multiple intelligences, as well as explore what they are and experience each one, even if they are less preferred. Then, lastly, we develop and we create a plan to expand any desired intelligences so that we can create them and make something greater for ourselves.